advanced villager tech, I separated it with two different categories. General techniques are techniques that every character can do which also help villager, and villager specific tech, which are techniques that only exclusively villager can do. There is a lot of advanced tech in this game. I tried to get a complete list, but it's likely I wasn't able to cover every single thing. A lot of them are pretty useless and not great, but me and my professional research team Hello, hello there, greetings. Found out which advanced tech is worth learning for villager and what's not. Is anyone else getting hungry? A lot of these are well known and don't really need too much explaining. So what I did was provide a document in the description of all the advanced techniques that help villager with additional notes and explanations. I also provided videos for each of them. This way, if I made a mistake or missed something, then I can go in and easily edit the document. If you see something that's incorrect or you think I missed something, then please comment down below and I'll make the change. We'll talk about advanced technique application in the neutral part of the guide. Do you know who ate all the donuts? Villager's essential tech is incredibly easy to do. The other more advanced techs are way too situational, flashy, and more difficult to perform. So if you're just a beginner villager player, you don't have to worry about those. I should mention that there are potential advanced techs based on the various pocketed projectiles you may get. But there's a lot of them, they're super situational, and they're not really that researched or explored. So I'm not going to talk about them. After planting a sapling, water it but jump or move forward. The next time you water the sapling, it will instantly grow. This is a very simple tech and easy to perform. The sapling retains water and has to reach its water threshold to grow fully, allowing you to store some water temporarily and then filling up the rest to surprise your opponent. You have to either jump or walk past it to prevent the sapling from filling up. Walking backwards from it doesn't work. The most optimal way of performing it is to jump onto it while watering and moving forward so you don't reach the threshold. It's useful for stage control, shield break setups, messing with the opponent's mind, and killing with a surprise hitbox. Start watering, then input a dash right after it starts. This will result in a very quick acceleration while watering. You can reverse directions while can dashing as well. You can also push shielding opponents without losing acceleration, which is impossible with a normal dash or a normal watering can push at the same speed. This lets you push people into saplings and set up shield breaks. Here's a comparison of can dashing versus not can dashing. This is pretty tight, you have to be pretty fast to dash right after you take out watering can, and you may accidentally put out a Lloyd rocket by mistake. It's really useful though, it helps with setting up shield breaks, it's good for player manipulation, and it's most useful for just retreating, because using the watering can leaves you helpless and can dashing allows you to run away easier. Fall down from the edge and place a Lloyd inside the wall of the stage. As soon as it explodes, you can place another one immediately. You can only do a couple before you eventually get too low. So this is used to stall for a bit and to throw off your opponents trying to edge guard or ledge trap you. It's not really that useful, you only really want to use it maybe once or twice to stall. It's a bit more effective on stages with walls, but leaves you more open to attacks. Very simple to do and very important to learn, as it's the difference between life or death. When you get thrown into the blast zone, buffer a Lloyd Rocket to halt your momentum to keep yourself from getting KO'd. You can also jump, but Lloyd Rocket is always the better option. You can place one on either side, but to be optimized you need to place one towards the blast zone, so you fall down and immediately shoot out another one if you need to. It's just a little bit riskier because you're holding towards the blast zone to do it. Now if you place Lloyd towards the stage, then this is easier, but you won't be able to put out another Lloyd to recover until the first one explodes. It can be useful though for trying to deter opponents from offstage edge guarding. Momentum cancelling is used for recovering, surviving earlier, and pissing off your opponents. This is an obscure tech that can stall the Lloyd at the ledge, keeping an active hitbox there that can two-frame opponents. To do this, you need to place the Lloyd at an almost pixel-perfect height to the ledge so it gets stuck there. After that, the opponent can either go high or go to the ledge and get two-framed. Some recoveries can avoid this better than others. If they go to the ledge before the hitbox activates, you can two-frame them so they get stage spikes. You can also just place ledge Lloyd then go down for an edge guard while the Lloyd covers the ledge. This tech takes a bit of time to set up, so it's a lot less applicable than it could be. Planting tree or just going for an edge guard are usually both better options. Get as close as you can to the blast zone and put out a Lloyd. Once you see it disappear in the little blast zone indicator circle, then put out another one. This is a fun tech that's not exactly hard to do, but it's hard not to accidentally kill yourself. 
Ideally, you'd be able to stall out the blast zone for a long time, but it's easy to mess up. The only application for this really is pissing off your opponent, stalling for a timeout, mind games, or stalling in the air to throw off opponent's offstage attacks. One of the issues is that you rack up damage being on the outside of the stage, about 1% for every 1 second. If they have projectiles like Pit, you're kinda fucked. Lloyd Trump is an effective and easier way to ledge Trump. Basically, you jump off the stage when you see the opponent trying to recover, place Lloyd towards ledge, grab the ledge slightly after they do, which will pop them off and the Lloyd rocket will explode on them. Balloon Trump is basically just an easier way to ledge Trump also. You run off stage, then immediately B reverse your up B towards the ledge. This is a slightly slower but easier way to ledge Trump if done perfectly. It's harder than Lloyd Trumping and doesn't have an explosive hitbox though. Jab Cancel is a very situational and flashy mechanic. It's basically just an impractical but fancy way to edge guard for style points. Basically, use water and can and walk as close to the edge without falling off, then buffer a jab. When you release the jab, it sends you forward a tiny bit, making you fall off the ledge. You will not perform the finisher, but instead are free to do any other aerial move. It can also be used on platforms. Tree Growth Ledge Trap is a useful way of ledge trapping to catch opponents who choose the ledge stall. Basically, you place a sapling at the very end of the ledge, partially water it, jump back, and put Lloyd out towards the sapling. Then run forward ahead of the Lloyd rocket and time the watering can to grow the tree when Lloyd is on the outside of it, making it explode and hitting the opponent. It's pretty tricky to do, especially at the time, and it only really covers a couple of options. It's more of a flashy way to edge guard your ledge stalling opponents. Now, this isn't exactly tech, it's just a down throw combo, but there's little tricks to it. You can get about 1 to 3 follow ups after down throw depending on the character and percent. First, grab and down throw. Then, buffer a dash and do a short hop fair. Fast fall, land within the auto cancel window, input another small dash, and immediately short hop fair again. Repeat this until it stops working. Now you don't need to buffer a dash, but it does help you close the distance between you and the opponent to guarantee further hits. This is good to learn to rack up damage, gain stage control, put yourself into the advantage state, and piss off your opponent. The Phantom Tree Hit is where you chop tree while falling through a platform with a frame 1 input to cancel all the end lag of the move. It's just a very obscure and hard tech that's somewhat useful and pretty neat. It can lead to a really cool shield break using Falling Tree, because the shield stun from getting hit from Falling Tree is so long, and without the end lag of the axe, you can make it in time to axe them. Also, it creates a very effective ledge trapping situation. For more details, follow the link in the description to learn more about this. Lloyd Counter is when Lloyd takes 12% or more on startup before it has a hitbox, causing a very strong explosion. This explosion kills much earlier than normal Lloyd explosion and can be used frame 1. To execute this, just space yourself correctly and spawn Lloyd while the opponent hits the Lloyd with enough damage. This will work from frames 1 to 52 before Lloyd has an active hitbox. It works best with smash attacks, but also works with strong aerials and strong tilts. The watering can wave dash is performed by inputting watering can, waiting until all the droplets are gone, then dashing back or forward and buffering any move you want. Make sure you stand still and wait until the water droplets are gone before moving. If you use watering can while moving and try to buffer a move, it will fail, except grab actually works both methods. It's a pretty small but cool tech. It's a good way to cover yourself with a move after watering can. This tech is good for microspacing, movement, mix-ups, mind games, and looks kinda neat. Interesting. Just look at that. So in conclusion, if you're a beginner, you only really need to learn and understand five of the techs. Half watering, can dashing, Lloyd counter, fair strings, and momentum cancelling. And these are all super easy. Everything else is either way too situational or not viable. Although I will be making a video in the future for all the smaller techs that didn't make it into this video, which I call tiny techs. Also, new villager tech can always be discovered, so keep an eye out. This was a pretty short video, villager is not a tech heavy character. Make sure to look at the document for all the general tech that applies to villager though. Anyways, thank you for watching, please subscribe, like, comment, etc, and I'll talk to you in the next video.